The question we ask ourselves is, how do we create a life filled with expansion and desire? But the real question is, what is keeping you stuck in pain? I know firsthand most people do not have the capacity to align themselves. So today we're going to find out what is getting in the way from living the life that you desire. Are you ready to conquer the challenges in your life, business, wellness, and relationships? Are you ready to love parts of your life you didn't know you can love or succeed in? The Get Inspired Show brings you amazing topics and a variety of guests ranging from celebrities, reality stars, social media influencers, entrepreneurs, and major success stories. You will gain a large amount of knowledge and priceless advice in health, business, social media marketing growth, relationships, life balance, and much more. I hope you're ready to get inspired because the show starts now. Our special guest is Eileen Smith. She's an author, former trauma therapist, creator of The Truth Method, a successful entrepreneur, investor, and dedicated mentor. With a rich professional tapestry that includes two master's degrees and extensive training in somatic therapy, Eileen has consistently demonstrated an embodiment of resilience and fortitude. Welcome to the show, Eileen. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and, and to be able to have this conversation with you. Super yes. excited. The pleasure is mine. I mean, I, uh, I got to say, guys, whether you're watching or listening, please get your pens and pencils out, notepad, because the value that Eileen is going to give us is beyond. All right. So I want to let the audience know today we're going to be going over the transformational work, the truth method. And we'll talk about that later more in detail with the following questions. I want the audience to ask yourselves right now, because afterwards, Eileen is going to give you three steps on how to solve this. All right. So here we go, guys. And go ahead and hit replay later if you're missing some of the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, first question, what is keeping you stuck? Second question, what do you fear? Third question, how are you shaming yourself? And fourth, why, sorry, where are you betraying yourself? So Eileen, now that I've given the audience these questions, go ahead and break it down for them. So here's the deal. You cannot reach your full potential if you don't step into the parts of yourself that you keep turning away from turning away from and if you really start looking at it carefully the things that you're turning away from are all the places that you fear all the ways you shame yourself and all the ways you're you're betraying yourself and those parts of you that have that have created those behaviors are really what we call the shadow self and the shadow self is the are the parts of yourself that don't feel safe in the world. And if you think about what happens when you don't feel safe in the world, you will absolutely go into your survival physiology. So it's why when something feels fearful, you start you start manipulating, you start avoiding, you start doing things that you wouldn't necessarily would say are aligned with who you are at your core. Yeah. And a lot of times when 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 something when we feel threatened we start shaming ourselves we start blaming ourselves you're doing all those things right and then you act in ways that are not aligned with you so that's what we call those are the pieces of the shadow and the shadow gets developed and this is very important the shadow gets developed as you start growing up and developing as a child so you start out in the world with no discernment between yourself and your environment but the moment your environment cues you to the things that are not okay about yourself, you start abandoning yourself. And those, those parts of yourself start feeling threat. This is all about what all about survival physiology and, and the parts of yourself on every level that don't that are that are that feel threatened. Anytime you feel threatened, you're gonna go into behaviors that are not aligned with who you are. So and let's just so not to interrupt, I just for anyone that's really grasping this right now, because I, I totally get it. But for someone that is maybe questioning, 
How does one even acknowledge or know that they're doing this? Well, let me give you a simple one. How many times have you said yes when you meant no? Many. Many, right? Okay. And, and most people listening to this have had that experience. Have you ever asked, you, asked yourself why you do that? You do that out of fear. And so when you, when you are fearful, you're going you're gonna to act in a way that's not aligned with what that inner voice is saying. So why do you say yes when you mean no? You are fearful of somebody else's reaction. Yep. You're fearful that you're going to be judged. You're, gonna, you're fearful that the status quo of the relationship will, will, will change. And you're fearful that you're going to hurt somebody else's feelings. Rather than actually worrying about your own feelings, but that's a whole other, whole, a whole other, it's a whole, whole other one, yeah. <laughs> whole, other, whole, other, whole other deal. But all of that, you have. So the work in the truth method is learning how to step into all those places of fear mm-hmm. that you keep turning away from, mm. right? Because we can't resolve something. We can. We we know this. This one thing, you have to feel it to heal it. So yeah. you can intellectually understand that, okay, I'm fearful of that. It doesn't mean you're going to do anything different about it. But the work is really about teaching teaching somebody to be able to step into all the places within themselves that feel uncomfortable. Because the, the reason, and this is important too, we the reason why you got there, right, to this place where you act in fearful ways is always unresolved trauma. Okay, so that that I can go off on a tangent here, but the simple version of that is if there if you don't feel safe, trauma makes you feel unsafe. If you don't feel safe, you're going to shut down, you're going to shut down and you're not going to want to feel those feelings. So this work in the truth method is about waking up all the parts of you that you haven't allowed yourself to feel. All the parts of you, it's breaking down the walls of all the, that those ego defenses and all the parts of you that have 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 defended yourself so it protects you from yourself. I mean, if that's what the ego does, it just simply protects you from the self. So it's breaking down those walls and stepping into all those places that are so uncomfortable that you don't want to go there. You know, we we cause yeah. truly this is what happens. Our bodies really believe that we're going to die from those feelings. But I still haven't met anybody that's died from a feeling or an emotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it's, it's helping somebody build enough resilience yeah. to move through each one of those experiences and tear down those walls and tear down those layers. So all those things that we've been turning away from, they, they lose their charge. They just are, they no longer, they no longer hold a person hostage to all the, uh, to uh, that hot, that hold them hostage in a way where they they don't they can't be fully aligned with what they want and the behaviors that they want and how they really want to be living their life. So it's taking them out of prison. I mean, I like to think of it as as this the work to get into the shadow and to go into the truth method is really about stepping out of your own prison. I love it. And this is deep stuff, you know, and it takes one to know one. I've gone through enough trauma to understand so many levels of it. But when someone, if you would ask me 10 years ago, what is, you know, love bombing? What is childhood or sorry, inner childhood trauma, right? I would have, I was a lost puppy, right? So I like to connect the audience here. And this is where I want you guys to participate, obviously for future and ask the questions. Can someone truthfully go back in time into their inner child and solve confidently with the truth method and obviously therapy and whatever coaching they need and thrive and conquer that meaning can they conquer not saying yes to everything can they conquer not snapping at people can they conquer not treating people a way that comes off narcissistic or egotistical and i know i'm giving you a tough question here because a lot of people say hey once a narcissist always a narcissist once they have a borderline disorder, that, that's it. It, it. Who who can succeed from this for sure? And who could possibly get some help from it either way? And that's a great question. 
So remember, all of those behaviors, those defensive behaviors are ego defense. Yeah. So when, in the truth method and in any process that's, that's um, well orchestrated, what has to happen is that a person needs to be able to step into all of those places where they're wounded, all those places where they're abandoned them. And it's not an intellectual exercise. It's about actually allowing the body to feel all the emotions that they've 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 put they've hidden because they've had they've had to defend defend themselves from themselves so it's about getting in there and it's about feeling those emotions in an environment where they're safe so so that the body can actually understand that it is okay to move through those deeply intense emotions and to be with them because eventually when you actually when you actually step into them it's like anything. It's like if you're not pushing against it, it loses its charge. And yeah. that's that that is the work of yeah. the truth method method is to help is to help all of that stored energy and all of those defense mechanisms is to break all that down. So all of those feelings that you've been protecting yourself from no longer, no longer run your life, no longer put you in situations that you are avoiding and lying and manipulating and and allow and then to put you in also to help you get to the root of what you really desire what you're passionate about and it's about opening up those channels for creativity and innovation and to be able to be to be fully in your own expression of yeah. life That's and to be able to, to be able to lit to be able to not not have a life but to really be able to live because we know there's a big difference between a life mm -hmm. and living. And this is about yeah. learning. Learning is about teaching the body and the mind to really step into the power of living. 100%. Now, what do you tell? See, I'm all about the challenges. And, you know, for most of the people that know my story, including you, when people ask me, well, how did you do X, Y, and Z? Everything started from struggle, right? But I was in such a pit. Just like I know your story very well. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, please take your time after this. I'm going to put all of her links of Eileen Smith. Check out her story. It'll make every hair in your body stick up. The things that this woman has gone through and overcome in such a way, you're like, but Eileen, you're perfect. Uh, there's no one perfect, but she's magnified happiness. And anyways, I, I, I got lost there for a minute, but you're so welcome. Listen to me. What do you tell someone? Just like when someone contacts me, Jason, I want to lose weight. Jason, I want to do this. But they, 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 get, they have a list of excuses as to, but I work too much, but I do this. Or what do you tell someone that says, well, you know, I know you may say, Eileen, that I have childhood trauma, but I love my parents. What do you do? What do you tell someone that maybe their mom is narcissistic? or that they're mentally abusive and they're just being behavioral good children to their parents and they don't want to disrespect them because they are afraid of losing their parents, being disowned. And I say this because I'm from Spain. When you disown, you know, when you're disowned by your father or your mom, it's like, that's it. And I'll be honest, I don't have a relationship with my father and I'll tell you why. I broke the boundary. I was not healthy in a relationship with my dad. I saved myself. And I, that's just me. I'm not telling everybody cut off your dad, but that was me. So go ahead and, and tell the audience, you know, that has this. Congratulations. Congratulations on that part. Thank, thank you. The biggest thing I tell people is, and I'll challenge it and I'll say, so basically what you're telling me is that the relationship you're with that, the, the unhealthy toxic relationship that you're having with somebody else is more important than the relationship you're having with yourself. Because the relationship that you're having with yourself, whether you like it or not, it's making you eat yourself to death, drink yourself to death, stuff your emotions to death, gamble to death, spend money to death, sex, except whatever it is, whatever maladaptive behaviors that you want to be different, they will never change unless you develop a develop a healthy relationship with yourself and put that relationship before any other relationship in your life. And yes, you are going to lose relationships along the way. 
But ask yourself this one question. Do you really want to be in those toxic relationships? And if you do, this work is not for you. But if you're unhappy and something doesn't feel right in your life, then you're going to have to be willing to uncover and look under every stone and get honest with yourself and face that fear that you have about being abandoned by other people. Because all you're doing now is abandoning yourself. So that, I mean, that gets into a whole bunch of attachment work, right? Why we stay in toxic relationships, which, you know, we can talk about that another time. But that is, that is the key. Do you want to be, because do you be in a toxic relationship with the other people? Because if that is the case, you are in a toxic relationship with yourself. Yeah, exactly. And how bad do you want to change? If this pain is something that you're so familiar with, Sometimes people get comfortable with the pain. That's all they know. That's a, that's the blueprint. But when you realize from the outside in, hey, you know what? Crap. This is not healthy for me. This is not good for me. Am I doing this? Am I staying in this relationship? Am I staying in this body because of others or because of me? Right? We have one life to live. We have the choice to live in freedom or to live in fear. And I choose damn freedom, baby. <laughs> I am- I'm, I'm so with you. You know, I have, I don't, I don't have any, anything in my life that I don't want. And, you know, my, my, my motto, can I curse on the show? Oh, my well, life. yeah, go yeah. ahead. My motto, my, you know, when I've gotten to this place and it took me years to get here though, but if it's not a fuck yes, it's a hell no. Yeah. And to be able, and to be able, I think I'm going to get that tattoo. I've been thinking about the tattoo thing. I but like I've it. been, but I'm, I'm, there's so much clarity and that's what my process helps with. Yeah. It gets you to pure clarity and it gets you back to being pure in, in who you are and all your motives. Mm-hmm. It brings you back to purity. Yeah. It's where we started. The truth method, we started out in truth. Yep. Right. And just, you know, life circumstances pushes us in a direction where we have to abandon our truth. So this is about restoring that sense of safety and bringing you back into, into your, into who fully who you are and to be able to step into your power. But I will say this, you cannot move past something until you move through it. And moving through it is not an intellectual process. It is an, it is, it is a process that happens in your body by being able to feel every ounce of that pain. Absolutely. And, and that, that's the, that's the hard part about this that people, people don't often don't want to do is like, yeah, you're going to have to get really uncomfortable and it's going to be really shitty for a while, but what's on the other side is, is, is bliss. And, you know, yeah. if you think about the law of polar, polarity, everything at its op, at, at its extreme turns into its opposite. And that's what this work is all about. hundred percent. Would you agree or disagree that a lot of people that have say, um, cause we all look, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I got some ego and I rock it, but I make it very clear. I'm extremely confident. Don't confuse me being sarcastically fun or coming off as an asshole, like an asshole. I'm not an asshole. I'm just, well, un- are, you, are you being playful? My question is, is it play? Is it it's just to- play? It's total play. But some people, this is the question that I have for you are people that have major high levels of say childhood trauma would you say once they get in that hole because of their past that they develop narcissism that they develop other things such as borderline personality disorder depression anxiety or can you formulate that for us please so all of those all of those things that you just just mentioned depression anxiety personality disorders all of those things happen from a place of you've had you've had intense childhood experiences and you can't make meaning of them and the emotions are too intense so you're going to do everything you can to protect that part of yourself yep. when you and that and that's how that's how all of those things form if you think about let's just take depression as an easy one depression how, why does why does somebody get depressed it's because they have completely, they, depression is really comes from not having ever felt your feelings. It's a suppression of your feelings. And that's why, that's why 
people people go into that what we call a free state, complete shutdown when they're depressed. They can't move. They're immobile. Mm-hmm. Okay. Same anxiety again. Another protective mechanism. It's anxiety is there to to let you know that you're not safe. That there's that there's some danger coming up. Again, it's the body. It's a body. The body's way of protecting itself from more intense feelings. Same thing with personality disorder. Right. They're all manipulation. They're all about manipulation and all about manipulating around attachment. Right. It's not to be abandoned, especially especially um, borderlines. Why is that though? I'm always, I've always been curious about that when it comes to those t- type of uh, personality disorders or even narcissism. Why do you feel it's all about manipulation for those individuals that have that? And do those people lack complete empathy? Like, for example, I know plenty of people that are married with full blown, you know, personality disorder, husbands or wives, and they're still with them, which is ironic to me, but do you feel they're completely apathetic? No. So like, are they kind? Do they even love? Like, does that make sense what I'm asking? So it does. So it goes back to what I said a a few minutes ago. When you've had childhood trauma, you shut down from your feelings. You have to shut down from those intense feelings because you don't, you don't wind up with a personality disorder if you weren't deeply wounded as a child. Mm. So again, it's a, it's a protective mechanism not to have to feel those feelings. And as you know, you can only be as empathic to other people as you are to yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not that they don't feel, they haven't accessed that those defense mechanisms, it's, those are ego defenses. Those de- defense mechanisms are so strong so strong they will not let that let that individual have to feel those intense emotions they bottle so it up they're, they're they have had to protect it's an internal protective mechanism yeah so they don't they don't know any difference they don't know how to truly feel those deep emotions so what they do is they they go one step higher and go to the emotions that they can deal with which is constantly trying to get relief from anything that doesn't feel right. That's why they're so manipulative and they're so good at manipulation. It's how they how they protect themselves from those deeper feelings. And it's the only way they understand that they can get what they want, which is not to be abandoned. Right? Interesting. Borderline, borderline and narcissists, right? They don't want to be abandoned. You never see narcissists leave a relationship. They will, they will, they will, they will make the other person think they're crazy. Mm-hmm. So that they will stay in there, not abandoned. Again, all manipulation. They don't have they don't have the mech- the internal mechanism to take responsibility for their feelings because they don't even know what their feelings are. Okay, so this is the this is the drum roll, please. <laughs> if they invested their time and energy and money into the truth method, is there any hope for those individuals? 110% because what the truth method does is it breaks down all those ego defenses and breaks down all those barriers so that that person can safely feel all the, into all the places that they've been too scared to feel in. I love it. See, and see, again, if I might just sign up myself. Why? Because I am not perfect. I am just a badass that keeps on learning and growing, right? You're tell doing the, the work. Always doing the work, right? I always tell, you know, never end. It just it's never ending, you know? It's- Look, here's the cool, here's the cool thing. And you know this, right? And the more that you allow yourself to feel into yourself, and the more that you move through the painful experiences, and the more they, they become less, they become less painful. But ultimately, what we're trying to get to is to be in a flow state. And yep. when all of that pain loses its charge, you're free to just float through the world yeah. and to be fluid in your life and to be honest and to show up and to be present, right? Because isn't that isn't that what we're all striving for? Yeah. Right. One, because that's it's about presence. Because because all that unhealed trauma, what that does is it doesn't allow you to be present because you're stuck. T- trauma has no sense of space or time. So you get stuck in that in all those places 
where you yes. never. Yes, we all do. So for anyone that's wondering, um, you know, about the truth method, I obviously know because you already gave me a little insights. You know, why don't you tell the audience? Because they might be saying, is it a book? Is it a movie? Is it a program? This is, I'm plug away, girl. Plug away. Okay, cool. I love that I get to do this. So the truth method, I do have a book coming out next year, but the truth method is I take cohorts of 10 individuals through a year long process. And the year long process is we meet four times a year, two days at a time. In between, you get time with me on the phone and you have an accountability partner. And what comes out of that process is a fully transformed self leader who is able to be in the world in a completely empowered way to live freely. So that, that's my plug. Wow. That's, I mean, if that didn't sell you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what will. You know, of course, I'm, like I said earlier, all of Eileen's links are going to be on each of the descriptions, no matter if you're watching this or if you're listening to this, I'm going to give anybody and everybody out there a word of advice on a personal note. You got to want it so bad that you, when you close your eyes and you envision all the negativity that you have, that it's just gone and you see yourself as that powerful, productive, peaceful, loving, badass that you are, because believe me, it's inside of you, no matter what the cost is. It's the best investment you can do. So I'm telling you, if you decide to, if you're not going to do Eileen's program, get her book coming out. And I know I'm going to have her on the show. I'm, would you do us the honor and come back soon? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And just on a separate note, one other thing. My first book, Moving Beyond Trauma, is a great introduction to understanding what's going on with, if, if you don't believe you have trauma, I promise you, everyone has it. This, this will help you understand and make sense and make meaning of so many of the behaviors that you don't understand about yourself. Yeah. Uh, move, moving Beyond Trauma is available on Amazon. She's got a heck of, I mean, five-star reviews, hundreds of them. The proof is in the pudding. But again, Eileen, let, let, before we, we say bye-bye, if you could be, no, nah, I'm going to give you a better question. If you could have any superpower, any, what would it be? Is to create a vehicle for every single human being to be willing to do the work to heal themselves. Because healing is possible for everyone. It's just about a willingness. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Now, how often should someone that is, uh, you know, in a path of healing or wellness as a whole, how often should they be seeing a coach like myself or a therapist or someone, you know, someone that's really high up there in the ranks like yourself? You know, is it once a month, once a week, two times a week? I think to get, it really, to get results, I really think it depends. If somebody is just starting out on the path, I think, I think twice a week, if you're really committed to the work, you go in there twice a week with somebody. Yeah, But then the other piece of it too, I want to be clear about this, is you have to do the work in between. Yeah. And the work in between requires you to get into your body and into your emotions on a daily basis. Yeah. And that, that, that to me is the work. You can't, it's not enough. And you and I both know this. It's not enough to just go for that hour or two hours a week or yeah. go to an intensive and then not do the work in between. That's, that, it's, it's about what you do in between the sessions in real life, how you apply, how you apply what you're learning yeah. and bringing, bringing, that, bringing it, bringing your body into that process of healing. And I stand behind that because I was a horrible, horrible student. I was a high school dropout, not because I was a loser, so to speak, but many reasons why I had to quit high school, but I just didn't like it. And I didn't like learning. It was many of the reasons why I let anxiety and depression be the reason why I got obese in the first place and why I brought in negative energy because I was negative, right? And what Eileen just said, it's not just kind of like I decided, oh, I'm going to go to college. I spent six years in college and I have two, two degrees, but I spent every night studying to make up time. I was like, you know what? I want this. Same thing with my body. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym, not once a week or twice. I want five days a week. And it's the in-betweens. I tell my clients, I may train you and I may be your nutritionist as well. But if you're not doing the meal prepping, 
if you're not doing the cardio on those off days when you're not with me, you're not going to be toned, you're not going to be tight, and you're not going to be lifted. And that's what you hired me for. So do us both a favor and put in the work. That's it. No, it's so it's so true. Dude, I got to come train with you. Show them your guns. Show them. Show them. Look at those things. Come on. <laughs> screenshot it, guys. Tag us right now. Three, two. <laughs> all right. There we go. Damn. Eileen, hey, thank yeah. you for keeping it caliente. Uh, I am so excited for the world and my audience to get to know you. I can't wait to jump on future episodes, future topics from narcissism, from love bombing to all the way to becoming better from the inside out. Thank you for just coming on Get Inspired. I just got to say this. You know, you're like my favorite new person, right? Thank you. Thank you. You are totally my favorite new person. Thank you. And thanks so much for having me on. You're so welcome. Keep it caliente. Stay inspired, guys. Go follow right now, right now Eileen on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You know the deal, what to do. And go give yourself a high five because you woo, are rocking it. See you on the next one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.